It's Inspector Protocol Session, and it just covers some Inspector Protocol use cases in production, and we will discuss some issues what we have right now. So, uh, issues. The most exciting part. I mean, first issue is that actually it my main it's main issue for me right now just because I'm trying to build this debugger for Node.js. It's not about production, but it's partially about production, but you use child processes. It's actually how to debug child process. Uh, the problem is that uh, Inspector Protocol is exposed using WebSocket, and Inspector by itself tried to generate some port. And by default, it uses one port. It definitely doesn't work if you have multiple processes. But it can automatically generate random port if you pass zero. And after you pass zero, the main question is how to get this generated port back to actually connect. And right now, the approach that is super ugly it only works when you can control how not to start it. You just parse a CD error and get this WebSocket URL out of CD error. But if child press mute a CD error or something like this, it would not work. So, have anyone debug child processes? Okay. Um, only debugging in the tests, but that's like already painful. <laughs> okay, it's already painful. Uh, so the possible solutions here. It's uh, the main problem is actually how to discover this port, how to report this port. It's probably we can use some alternate uh, alternative transport to report this port. For example, diagnostic report that was just introduced in experimental. And maybe if you have some other ideas how we can report it and it can be easily consumed by your tool, it will be nice. <laughs> It's like I know VS Code allows you to attach to um, like node processes that don't even explicitly open the inspect port yet, um, and it lists them all. So maybe look through how they did that. Yeah, they actually use signals. They can send signal. Yeah. And it open a DevTools socket. Actually, uh, the problem is at least now that some cloud environment actually prohibits using signals. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but it's a nice point. I will take a look again. Maybe they introduce something better. Okay, that's problem. Uh, the main problem, the main and biggest topic, actually. Uh, the problem was <coughs> raised by Ali, by Off Robots, actually, is security. Is how to how is it secure to use protocol in production? Uh, from one point of view, uh, as long as you are not leaking WebSocket URL, it should be fine. But at the same time, I remember the second part of security is not exposing too much information as possible. Right now, if you leak WebSocket URL, someone get full access to protocol. It can, someone can debug it, someone can uh, execute remote code, and anything like this. Um, I think we even had a security, some vulnerabilities that we fixed because people complained about it. Yeah, the, that was being predictable. Yeah, the idea, one of the problems was that uh, we actually explore, by default exposed protocol using 0000, 000 right. interface on some predictable port, yeah. and was, it was too, my, too easy to connect. I, I've actually seen this in the wild, like people exposing the debugger uh, randomly, and then uh, other people connecting to it and exploiting it. Yeah, it's very good point. First of all, uh, there is some very simple layer of security right now that you need to get full WebSocket URL to connect, actually. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, by default, node on the port, on the inspector port, node will expose JSON endpoint mm -hmm. where you can go and get this full WebSocket URL. Mm -hmm. So the first measure, very straightforward, I actually have a full request to introduce a flag that actually disables this JSON endpoint. And then port won't be enough to actually get the connection, get access to protocol, and you will need to brute force this magic long token. That should be not possible, actually. 
so just a question one that uh, so is it I'm not fully familiar how WebSocket check work works. Is it only a problem when you expose all of your ports to the web? So if you if for example if you have some kind of you're using a computer yes. and you only bind uh, I don't know three thousand or yes, somehow you are, problem if you are not exposing any ports and you only run trusted JavaScript code somehow or oh, you don't use actual NPM dependency or you verify all of them, then yes, it works. But if you run on trusted code, then it can, for example, then you run two nodes to the same uh, instance, one node can connect to another node. What is the security vector in the NPM? I mean, I'm not ready to answer on this kind of, I mean, security problem is when you're running two nodes that you actually someone compromise some NPM package and use this NPM package to brute force all ports and connect to another node instance on your machine, actually, on your okay. You could also, like, your NPM module could open the port, right? Yes. Because you can programmatically start the inspect mode. Yeah, so, uh, so first problem is actually leaking this web circuit URL. If you can avoid leaking, it will be fine. But I mean, if it's finally leaked, another problem is actually exposing too much information. And one of the suggestions by Ali and Eugene, Eugene was that we need to whitelist the mines that are actually available in Node. It might work. I mean, if you need to only profiler or you only if you only need some part of protocol, it possibly work. But at the same time, protocol by itself was not designed to operate in this environment. For example, you need runtime domain for a lot of inspection. And if you enable only profiler, you cannot get it. If you enable only key profiler, it's much harder to get actual heap objects without runtime domain. It's something that we can work on. But it's an open question how to solve it. If you have any idea, by the way, there's the link. And there are a lot of discussion happens there. And please join and share any of your comments. Uh, has there been any discussion about um, making this flag default in a text major version? Not yet. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> no endpoint is not merged yet. And I wish to have it enabled by default. <coughs> But uh, I'm not sure about the compatibility. Maybe because I expect like most of the security issues we see today, where, where people accidentally expose this, is because they don't know about it. Yes. And it's not going to help having a flag to disable it because they're not going to know about it. Yes, <laughs> I, I agree. But at the same time, I mean, Visual Studio Code, for example, I see that you have this mm. uh, endpoint. Yeah, all and, 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 and the Chrome like if you go to Chrome Instax to find your node process. Yeah, that's how that's how it discovers it. Yeah, that's yeah, how it works. Yeah. I think you've already had to turn on you had to turn on something. Yes, yeah, so you need yeah. to pass some hard inspect. You can so pass a second point there. But you can for example make it so that uh, if you turn on debugging with the signal it doesn't expose the endpoint? Uh, we can do it. I mean yes, we definitely can right now remove as much possibilities as possible. It's one of them, yes. But if, for example, uh, Visual Studio Code your signal, mm -hmm. they expect to have this parts. I think the other thing is it's still, like security was brought up as one of the issues. I guess it's still the, the making the case that turning this on in production is going to be acceptable. Security is one thing, but like for other reasons as well, like the damage, performance overhead. I think people are uncomfortable because of a bunch of, you know, it's, people aren't comfortable with the turn on production. It's great for debugging locally and all that. These aren't necessarily issues for that, but as soon as you get into production, it's a bunch of different things. I'd like to say that uh, protocol, if we just make a step uh, from security, protocol was designed in a way that it is ready from production, from performance point of view, from, I mean, mostly from performance point of view. And it actually used to automate Chrome a lot and used by different companies. And from the, I mean, the only aspect that was not took in mind when the product was designed was security. I mean, security was at the point where we're not, it's not easy to get a port, it's not, it's not easy to get full web circuit URL, and it's enough for our use case. 
But in production, I easily can imagine that we'd like to have more security and more control over everything. So I'd like to say that performance is solved. Kind of nothing is solved finally, finally but it's mostly <coughs> solved. If you need something, you definitely need to pay for something like profiler. There are some overhead, but if you don't need profiler, you need something else, you only pay for this little piece that you need. So yeah. Is that something like Netflix is already, are you already using it internally and become comfortable with? Like, Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. It was just raised recently. Yeah. Uh, you were saying that the runtime domain is like, required for the certain other domains. Is that required? By compiler, because as I understand, the compiler just you know passing through and like start the compiling API in VA. Um, like, is the runtime domain required for It's required when you use protocol usually. I mean, as a domain, it's just some concept from runtime domain. For example, if you capture heap snapshots mm -hmm. and you like to get objects back, then real objects back, runtime domain is actually domain that it's expose all objects inspection. Implement everything about inspection objects section. So you can get your profile back. You even can load it or uh, automatically analyze it. But if you'd like to inspect it and get better picture of what is actually in your heap, you need runtime domain. And something like this. I mean I believe that most stuff will work. And you will be able to get a lot of meaningful data out of it, but it was never actually considered to the protocol never was built with the idea that it can be used with different domains names. Yeah. We check also PM2 uh, because I know that, that he uh, is back with the node of findings of new memory and so on. So uh, they apply the same solution as, as code, for example, to understand which part. Uh, oh, so what project? Uh, PM2. Uh, it's uh, like a process manager uh, that uh, uh, manages some, uh, some process. I definitely need to take a look. I never saw this project before. And I don't know what they use. But as far as I know, there are right, right now there are two solutions how to get profiling information out of node is some flex that you can use. There's some we used to have some JavaScript bindings to give, get profile I believe. I mean, uh, I mean uh, to get profile out of node process. Uh, there, there are some APIs. There's some APIs. Uh, like the heap snap. Oh. There are flag I, I know flag and um, you can use the inspector API. Yes inspector API. And if you Really want to do it? You can like install some new add-on that invokes the uh, the API. Yeah. And yeah, I think like yeah, that's what. So yeah, they use final job. Most likely they use inspector, but I need to check. I don't know. Uh, another possible solution for the security problem is uh, do not use WebSocket and use alternative transports like you know pipes that just available only locally. And the spec pipe is actually a work in progress by Eugen. Uh, I hope Eugen. I will help Eugen to finish it, and it will solve some problems. Uh, for example, Chrome, when exposing protocol, use pipe when it requires some kind of security. But again, it's about the, it's two different problems: how to access protocol and what protocol exposes. Uh, problem to how to access protocol is much easier to solve. So. What we like to expose. And um, this pipe is the, the kind of pipe in Go, as in like main pipe on Windows and Unix domain socket on Linux. I need to double check how it's actually implemented. Uh, I know that Chrome actually have implementation of pipe for each platform, and I need to like, actually map it to node implementation. I'm not sure. But yeah, there's a possible solution. I don't know. And so something not about issues, but feature request, uh, network inspection. It's I go from during the conference when people start to use inspector, they very fast go to the point where they'd like to have some way to inspect the network. And the main problem is how we can inspect network. 
and what we should do actually. I mean, are we out of time already? I till 12. I mean, yeah, it's just if you'd like to talk about network inspection, if you need network inspection, and, and if you'd like to help us to do something there, uh, please join. I will open diagnostic issues soon. And right now, I'm going to have a picture of us against NGB. <coughs> That's it. Thank you.